Well, we are down in the Boken Cave at Eric's house, otherwise known as my basement. And we are going to marry up the Steiner GS3 to my rifle. I have an antelope hunt next weekend, so plenty of time to do this. It's not like it's the night before, so I'll actually have time to shoot it. Trading out uh, one scope for uh, the upgrade of the Steiner. And uh, just got to thinking that a lot of people will either have their local gun shop where they bought the rifle do it or maybe get online and watch YouTube and watch a scope mounting video. So we just thought since we're going to do it, we'd film it. And there's some things that I learned already this morning just kind of doing the walkthrough on this that we'd like to bring out. So, so we have all the tools down here in the basement for mounting scopes. Have our gun vise. Um, gun is unloaded. Always check make sure you're unloaded. Bolt is actually out. Um, we have the scope. We kind of did a run through earlier to set the eye relief of the scope. So we have a piece of masking tape on the scope to indicate the proper eye relief. Um, Dan checked it both standing and laying in the prone position with the bipod. It's very important to check that. A lot of times you mount it in the standing or, or offhand position and then you lay down to shoot and you can't get far enough up on the scope to get a good image so we checked it both ways so that's a good uh in or index for us to go so with. if i scope myself now it's completely my fault you're not going to scope yourself because this steiner gs3 has a very nice padded rubber ring around the well, back of the scope it may bonk you but i don't think it's going to but cut it's not going to cut me it'll get your attention it's not going to cut me but Mick. it won't cut you um so what we did first is uh, I put the bases on the rifle, and uh, the Steiner T-Series rings have the torque specifications on the box, 60 to 65 inch-pounds for the through bolts on the bases, and 25 inch-pounds for the cap screws. Very important to torque it properly. A lot of people just torque it until they feel it's tight and quite often over-tighten it. You can uh, strip out the screws. You can actually pinch the scope body, the tube if you over torque things so very important to have a torque screwdriver it reads in inch pounds and so anyway we mounted the bases at, you know, at 60 inch pounds and then I lapped the rings this is a ring lapping tool it's basically a, a true stainless steel 30 millimeter bar with the grooves in it and you apply 800 grit lapping compound to it assemble the rings the caps on there loosely and then you lap the rings to get it get perfect alignment on the rings rather than just whatever the factory tolerances are. So you can see this 30 millimeter bar is sliding very nice and smooth through there. We have good alignment on the rings, a good clamping surface. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is place this scope. Oh, you know what? We do need to get the rosin. There's a jar of rosin up there on the shelf, Dan. I'll get it. Stand by. <laughs> Should we play some old music? <laughs> See the song, Dan? So this is actually this is rosin. This is actually recommended by the company that makes the ring lapping tool. It's just powdered rosin, and it actually will enhance the gripping of the scope or the between the, or the the tolerances, I guess, between the rings and the scope itself. Is that all you use that for, or is there other uses for that? I use it when so. I'm. Actually, the reason I have it is for when I'm removing barrels from like revolvers or rifles. You, I have a barrel vise that has wooden barrel blocks, and you put rosin on the blocks and clamp it, and it'll grip the barrel so you can unscrew the barrel from the action. We're going to put some on the caps as well. Handy thing to have in the shop. Yeah, I would imagine that's not something a lot of people have. No, no. Around, but... <laughs> I, I have a I do a little lot of hobby type gunsmithing. And would you say you're a good Brownells customer? I would say I'm probably one of their favorite customers. <laughs> I order fairly regularly from them. Okay, so we got a little rosin dusted in the rings. That'll just give us a little better grip, less chance of the scope moving once it's mounted up. So go ahead and place the scope in, in the rings. Using that masking tape as our 
I relief index. And we're gonna have to check the reticle level, but we'll do that once we get it loosely mounted up. One thing important was to keep the caps oriented the same as when I was lapping it. Easy to do, this front ring has a Steiner logo. I have it pointing back so I know it's, I didn't get it reversed. And I actually marked this one with a little mark, little pen mark on the bottom to show which way is forward. So we keep everything, we went to the trouble of lining everything up. We want to Can keep you pull that the back one off again? And then I just wanted to show. You can see the difference in the coloration there. You can see what that lapping tool was able to, for lack of a better word, just sand a little bit off. facing the right direction. So I'm going to drop all the cap screws in. You want to be careful when you're tightening these down. I like, I'm very particular. I like to have the equal sized gap on each side of the ring. So just loosely tighten them down. So as with most things like that, you would do kind of a Crisp opposite part. corner to opposite right. corner type of pattern. It's like if you're yeah. doing the lug bolts on your wheel on your car yeah, or something, yeah. you, want, you want to alternate. You Valve cover gaskets, whatever it exactly. is. Exactly. You don't want need to work down of one side and then duck toward the other side. Work around it in a alternating pattern, as you said. this point, right, well, let me get these all semi tightened. Not, nothing's really tight at this point. Just want to get them close because we're going to have to rotate the scope to level the reticle. Just be able to rotate the scope very little bit. So we're going to use a reticle leveler. There's many types, or several types of these. There's some that use bubble levels. This one's just a simple visual check. It has horizontal bars, and you find a flat spot on the rifle, which is pretty easy. The this uh, Weaver type base or Picatinny rail base it has a lot of slots. It's flat on top. You can use that to orient the flags. And you're just going to look through and try to. Well, that's a little hard to do with that on there. Can't see anything. <laughs> okay. I'm going to all I'm doing is lining up the horizontal crosshair with these black and white bars on. Let's go. No, we're going to take it out of there and look for it. It's not too hard on this one. I'm going to look at a wall over there that's fairly light colored. Say that looks good. So we've set the reticle level, we've set the eye relief. All that's left to do is torque down the cap screws. So I'm going to set the torque wrench to 25 inch pounds.
Oddly, these screws aren't the are torque screws, and they're exactly the same size as the screws you use for working on your deck. Is this this is the one of those yeah, just screwdriver right. bits that comes screws. in a box of uh, deck screws for working on your deck. So, have you seen my deck? I obviously don't work on my deck very much. <laughs> I have a lot of deck in my building. I'm just going to lightly tighten these first uniformly going in the crisscross pattern. Look at my gaps, make sure I have even gaps. I'm actually going to back this off just a little bit. particular I like the gaps to be nice and uniform okay so I'm gonna start tightening them down again not gonna go all out on any one screw right now I'm just ease them down you do all that now is not the time to get in a hurry and no you see, exactly you don't want to get in a hurry on this stuff you're trying to get a very uniform Accurate torque. Everything stays lined up perfectly. That was not a torque. That was a okay, so now I'm going to start tightening down to the 25 inch pounds. One, two, Four. And it's not that tight. Back in the days before I whoops, had the torque screwdriver, I probably over torqued many a scope. I think one of the things that I took away from the factory tour that we did in Steiner, just over here in Greeley, Colorado, where all the Steiner rifle scopes is made is the durability of these scopes when you see them torture test these scopes and you know we think oh I pump my scope you know and I knock my knock my scope off if it's mounted correctly those things can take uh, it's quite a jolt before you would actually yeah we watched them drop testing scopes for like 500 cycles I mean, and with no issues so yeah they could take if everything's lined up properly torqued down well nice, everything's nice and even it can be pretty, you know, they're tougher than you think. That's all there is to it. I mean, we, we, you know, we mounted the bases, we lapped the rings, we checked the eye relief, leveled the reticle, and then torqued the caps down to the, or the 25 inch pounds of torque. All that's left to do is uh, bore sight it and take it to the range and shoot it. And I think if nothing else, we've learned something to ask the person who works at the gun shop you know you can ask them do they lap rings yeah. do they do you use the torque screwdriver? do you use a torque screwdriver do you use any rosin and if they uh, kind of look at you like uh, deer in the headlights maybe it's <laughs> time to move down the street and, and mm -hmm. find somebody else that at least can articulate why are they do or do not uh, use those procedures so that next uh, thing like you said is to take it out and shoot. and shoot it and Hopefully the next video we make will be about um, the amazing shot we made on, <laughs> on the speed goat.